האורח הבא שלי הגיע אלינו מארצות הברית, והוא מוביל טרנד עולמי של מעבר לתזונה טבעונית. בינתיים, הולך לו לא רע. אפילו פה בארץ חצי מיליון אנשים צפו בהרצאות שלו ביוטיוב. חלקם מצטרף למלחמה שלו למען זכויות בעלי החיים. כשאני אומר מלחמה, אני מתכוון לזה. הוא אישית מוגדר כטרוריסט בקנדה וגם בארצות הברית. אז איך ילד יהודי טוב מדטרויט הופך לאחד האנשים הכי שנויים במחלוקת בשנים האחרונות? קבלו את האקטיביסט גרי יודרובסקי. I've seen your lecture, your famous YouTube uh, lecture, only yesterday. And uh, I must uh, say, um, I'm a cynical person, I think, very skeptical. And when I saw it, I, s I thought, okay, is, he has uh, some very interesting points. And I didn't know how it will affect me. And today, before the show, I was hungry. I went to the sandwich, uh, there's a big basket with sandwiches. And I said, okay, what am I eating now? This one has cheese. The other one has meat, and uh, <laughs> this, the, uh, this one has eggs in it. So what am, what am I supposed to eat now? Well, you have to get a new caterer first, okay? <laughs> There's plenty of food to eat out there. Remember, we have beans and lentils and rice and quinoa, millet, all these wonderful grains. Uh, then there's veggie burgers and other vegetarian and vegan options, too. So there's plenty of food to eat. Once you realize what's out there, understand old habits are hard to break. New habits are hard to form. When I first went vegetarian back in 1995, I lived off of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for like three months straight. But once I realized there's ethnic food, and as we talk about ethnic food, yeah. falafel, tabbouleh, hummus. I mean, people in America clamor for your food over here. That's a meal. You can eat that all day long. Sometimes I go two or three months eating nothing but falafel, falafel. and tabbouleh and hummus all day long. But if you wonderful. eat all day falafel, you will look like a mountain. No, you don't get fat off vegetarian and vegan food. No, no, no. Okay, <laughs> tell me the secret after. Exercise okay. is important too, though. Yeah, yeah don't just so sit around all day. Let's talk about your personal experience. How, how did you become a, a vegan? Well, my stepfather is a clown in a circus, and he took me backstage when I was 23. I was blind like everyone else. I thought I loved animals because I loved dogs and cats. So I went backstage to see an elephant, and he was chained up. His front left foot, back right foot, to the cement floor. This is how all elephants in the circus are kept. So it hit me like a... big movement against uh, using animals in circus. No, absolutely. In circus it's, it's, it was nothing but a slave show. I realized that at the moment. It also made me realize where my food came from. So I went to a slaughterhouse on my own to see what was going on. Thornapple Valley Pig Slaughterhouse in Detroit, Michigan in 1993. And it was a concentration camp. It was Auschwitz. It was Birkenau. When you have beings being treated like nothing, when they're being ripped away from their family members, when they're being killed, when they're being laughed at and mocked and ignored, that's a holocaust. So it, it made me think that I didn't want to be a cruel person. Most people I know aren't evil people, but most people don't realize their daily choices support evil. Do you think it's really necessary? Is it, do, do you really believe it's the same? I think killing, it's worse. Killing people and killing animals? Yeah, I think it's worse. When we talk about the Holocaust, we have six million Jews. You can add the other six million blacks, gypsies, mentally retarded people. In America today, 30 million innocent beings will be murdered for a sandwich. Every year on this planet, 60 billion land animals and 90 billion marine animals are killed. That's a holocaust of monumental yeah, but, but, proportion. Uh, these are cows and we're talking about people. But that's what the Nazis said. These are Jews. They don't count. I'm a Nazi and I count. And this so is what you really don't see do. a difference between animals and, and uh, people? Absolutely not. When it, especially when it comes to pain and suffering. We all suffer in the same way. We all feel pain in the same way. A knife in my throat is just as painful and harmful as a knife in a cow's throat, in a chicken's throat. As a Jew, don't you get uh, strong reactions uh, for using the, that comparison? It's usually positive. I'm having nothing but success here. Remember, I don't do things to be a politician. I don't say things that people want me to say. I speak the truth, and the truth is harsh. I know people don't want to hear that there's a Holocaust taking place that they're taking part in, but that's a fact. I'm not being dramatic. Again, if you go back 60, 70 years, 
Jewish women had babies in their arms and the Nazis ripped those babies away. In the dairy industry, every cow not only has her baby stolen, she's raped to impregnate her. And then when the baby is born, they steal the baby away. They tattoo Jews. We tattoo animals. We brand them. So we murder as you them. see it, uh, we are all Nazis to you. Well, not to me. You have to think about the victims. The victims think you're a Nazi. Remember Isaac Basheva Singer, a great Jewish humanitarian who was vegan. He's the one that said, in relation to animals, all humans are Nazis. For the animals, it is an eternal Treblinka. So it's not so important what I think. It's what the animals are thinking. We're now seeing, uh, currently seeing a uh, uh, short... Uh uh, that's shocking. That's, shocking. that's evil. It's, it's cruel and it's disgusting and uh, uh, you want uh, to prove what? I want to show people what's going on because if you watch the news, if you watch TV, the advertisements are happy cows, right? It's, they're never showing you slaughterhouses. Think about this. If a slaughterhouse wasn't such an evil place, how come McDonald's and Burger Ranch, why don't they show you slaughterhouses and say, hey, this is where your hamburger comes from. This is where your chicken nuggets come from. They intentionally lie to you. I don't lie. I intentionally tell you the truth because I think if you saw what was going on in the slaughterhouse, no logical person could choose to continue to eat animal flesh and the things that come out of animals. Yeah. Uh, so what is your final goal, to, to kill the meat industry, to kill the, um, the farms? Yeah. I want to destroy all animal exploitative industries. They're unjust. The animals are not willing participants in and this what holocaust. About, uh, what about the people who takes, uh, take place in, the, in those uh, industries? Yeah. I read this somewhere that you said uh, that uh, a man that hurts an animal, uh, 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 you could kill him or uh, should die or something like that. There's a justification for killing anybody who harms a human or an animal intentionally. Again, you have to understand, nobody's opposed to violence. And I've been asking the audience here every day, raise your hand if you're opposed to the Allied forces coming into Auschwitz and Birkenau and murdering Nazis to save Jews. And nobody raises their hands. The problem is nobody thinks animals are important enough to kill for. I think the animals disagree. I think the cows and the chickens disagree. So if I went into a slaughterhouse, I'm the peaceful person. If I, even if I had guns drawn, I go into a slaughterhouse, who operate the slaughterhouse, I would say, drop your weapons. You're done killing. You're going to let these cows and these pigs and these chickens go. I'm the one that's justified. I'm stopping murder. There's a justification. There's nobility in killing somebody who There's has no ethics. There was, the Allied forces were noble. Do you think they weren't noble? Do you think that they should have let Nazis kill Jews? I think Jews? They, they did what they should have done. And, and that's what we need to do as human beings. If we claim to be compassionate, claim to know right from wrong, we have to kill beings who kill evil people. But with that saying, you give uh, legitimacy to people who murder other people. You know, every, uh, each, um, every person could choose his own goal. Like uh, the person who killed our Prime Minister, Yigal Amir, he said, OK, I did it to save the country, to save more people getting killed. But you know why that was unjust. Who was he killing? Prime Minister. No, who was the Prime Minister killing? Nobody. Think, you understand the difference between a murder for no reason, a psychotic murder, a psychotic murder that a fundamentalist Jew, a fundamentalist Christian, a fundamentalist Muslim takes part in, and going into a slaughterhouse and saying, leave these cows alone. Cows or harm will, nobody. Uh, Chickens have harmed nobody. We are murdering innocent beings. So if it ever came down to that, but that's not the issue. That is not the issue. The issue is we just need to change the way we view animals. We have to realize humans aren't the only beings on this planet, and we're not more important than animals. So why are you, aren't you allowed in uh, some countries? You can't enter Canada uh, or uh, the UK, I think. Because so. we live on a planet that murders animals, a speciesistic planet. Understand, like a racist who thinks that their race is better than another race. Speciesists think that the human species is superior to animals and we have the right to harm and kill any species we choose. So why would countries who murder animals want me to come in there and open people's eyes and get people to change? Were you surprised from your success in Israel? Uh, um, I've always noticed that over the years if I talk to people who have been oppressed, if I do a classroom full of Jewish people, if I do a classroom full of women, Hispanics, black people, people who have been oppressed understand oppression. So 
I'm not surprised that Israel is embracing veganism right now and embracing me. We've been oppressed way back into Egypt times and to this day still, depending on what part of the world you're in. So people who have been harmed understand why it's wrong to harm somebody else. So you really think you have a chance? I think there's a chance. I mean, it kind of depends on which day you ask me. You ask me when I'm in Israel for the last 10 days and yeah. people are embracing me, I think, yeah, I think Israel could become the first nation on this planet to abolish concentration camps once and for all. You ask me on a bad day when people are screaming and yelling at me, wanting to fight, I'll say, no, I don't think it's possible. But keep in mind, no injustice can live forever. Sadly, injustice can live for hundreds or even thousands of years, but no lie can last forever. And people are becoming aware and I think animals will obtain their freedom one day and be treated equally and fairly. Well, thank you very much for coming. You know, uh, <laughs> the Jewish uh, New Year's Day is uh, in two days, Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, as you say it in America. <laughs> I would like to give you uh, a Rosh Hashanah gift. Okay. It's a special uh, organic seed. Um, we bought it uh, from uh, an organization who helped the disabled. And um, happy New Year to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.